and welcome to a new web series called Projects in Pajamas. But first, pajamas. But first, most important thing, let's get into the pajamas. As you can see, I am already in my pajama. Hello everyone and welcome. If you have seen our last video by any chance, did you also notice how many different pajamas I wore in that video? After spending hours of editing that video, I kind of got annoyed and slightly embarrassed by seeing all those pajamas. So I kind of felt the need of having something more fancy looking, but still pajama-esque. And because I was in need of a new bathrobe anyway to lounge around in, as we're not going any place anywhere soon, so why not combine all the things? Because I couldn't be bothered to draw a pattern myself, I bought a digitized vintage one from Etsy, of which I will put the link in the description down below. Unfortunately, the original pattern wasn't in my size, so after assembling the patterns, I retraced the patterns to size them up and to lengthen the sleeves from 3 quarters to a full length sleeve. The fabric I'm using is a cotton velvet in a beautiful deep petrol color. Cutting out the fabric was quite the puzzle, as I had just barely ordered enough fabric. Once all pieces were cut out and all marks and notches were transformed to the fabric, I started by pinning and sewing all the darts. Ironing and pressing velvet can be quite tricky. Depending on the location and what kind of seam I'm pressing, I use either just steam or use some scrap velvet as a pressing cloth and make sure to brush the nap after steaming. Once all darts were in place, I searched all raw edges. Basting the front edges of the skirt makes for easier pressing and hemming. Once those front edges were stitched, I could attach the skirt to the bodice. Instead of one big rope, this particular housecoat has two, that are attached to the overlapping pieces, sort of like a wrap dress. I then used some iron-on interfacing for the pieces that need extra reinforcement. Like the collar, the facing, the cuffs and the pocket flap. As I have two identical collar pieces, I used one as a makeshift pressing mat so I could iron on the interfacing to the other.
make sure to either clip or pink curved edges. So I've run into a little bit of a problem when um, basting down the collar and the facing onto the bodice. And according to the instructions, you sew down your strap first on, on um, the bodice, then the collar and then the facing. And then what happens is that you turn the facing inside and you have your collar that's rolled over like this. Um, but that ends up here with my waistline is that the collar folds over my strap, but my strap is supposed to go that way. So and over this, if you see what what's happening here. So um, yeah, that does, does not make sense to me also because then this part is um, sticking out. So I turn it around on the other side. I did the collar first, then the strap and then the facing. And then what happens is, so I did have to um, undo a little bit of the skirt, but then when the facing turns in, you have the collar that rolls over, you have the strap that goes out, and then you have the skirt that catches all of that in. With a herringbone stitch, I secured the facing in place on the inside of the bodice. Moving on to the sleeves, which were pretty straightforward. Alright, so the sleeves are done, um, well, not really, but I don't know if you can notice the difference in the way the little poof falls on both sleeves, it's because I've done them differently and I just wanted to show you how much of a difference it can make and how you construct your um, cuffs. So um, I want to go with this one because this is looks really nice and this is actually looking a little bit like, I don't know doesn't really do what it wants to what I want it to do um, so yeah there's a difference in how you uh, process your cuffs and how they fall even though the pattern and the pattern pieces are j the same um, so yeah let me show you on the inside what the difference is so here I have the two sleeves and you can sort of see it better now that they're laying flat um, so this was the first sleeve I've done and the one I'm not happy about and as you can see, the fabric wants to go actually straight up and it's just very bulky. Well, with this one, actually the fabric wants to go the opposite way. And that's the way I I finished the, um, um, the cuffs. So if I turn this one inside out, there you go. So this one is actually neatly finished on the inside and all the raw edges are folded over. Um, while on the other cuff, uh, I still have to finish off the edges because boy does a velvet fray. <laughs> um, so yeah, so here I have the cuff here and the cuff actually needs to go out. go 
know so this is the way the cuff will sit on your arm uh, which makes the actually the 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 sleeve the gathered edge of the sleeve folded over and they actually naturally it wants to go that way that's why it, it the the baggy effect is more um, falls more naturally on this sleeve if that makes sense um, because it wants to go it wants to go this way instead of that way because this one is flat and this one's folded over I don't know if this makes any sense um, but yeah it, nature <laughs> physics I guess <laughs> um, so I'm going to undo this one and I'm going to do the same one as this and I'm just going to search the edges because this needs to keep from fraying because oh my god this frays like crazy um, but yeah once I've done this one they can go into the uh, the coat and um, we are one step closer to finishing Using a ring gathering stitch on my stitch line helps to put in a sleeve that has extra width that needs distribution. Especially vintage sleeves have always more volume in the sleeve head, even though they go in smoothly. Once both sleeves were in, we could start with the pocket. I base it down on the stitch line, but also stitch a gathering stitch on the edge to help with the curves. And finally finishing off with the hem, again using a herringbone stitch. Good morning.
I'm really happy with how it turned out. I instantly feel glamorous the moment I put the robe on in the morning, and I just never want to take it off again. I already bought fabric to make another one that I can wear in the summer months. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye!